Okay, okay, hear me out. Rent is due, I gotta feel my crack cocaine addiction, so I'm here to make my own brand new Why Paladins is Dying video. I mean, technically it's not, it's more like a new player experience video because I've done some testing and I thought I need to voice my opinions on some things and let you guys know what I think is going to happen to Paladins. Just like the Omen video, uh, this video is not going to be scripted, I don't give that much of a shit. I'm just going to have talking points that I think I need to get out there and just need to speak about to people because I feel like we're overlooking a lot of this stuff because currently everyone's focused on the sort of balance of the game and how dog shit the devs are being and that makes sense, we should be focusing on them. However, when I get asked what my thought about the game is or if people should come back or something like that, I feel like there's a lot of underlying issues that also need to be brought up when considering if someone should start playing Paladins nowadays. And I really wanted to see what the sort of new player experience would be like. And so I created a brand new account. And I didn't smurf in the inherent, well, I did smurf, obviously, that's the definition, but I didn't go onto this and start running like Dredge, Strix, or Omen and ruining the game experience for the new players. In fact, I went out of my way to only pick champs like Ceres. All I did was sit back, stay invisible, and heal, that's all I did. And all I did was observe, and I have got some interesting things to say. Before I get onto the sort of balanced gameplay side of anything, Let's just start by logging into the game and we'll go from there. As you can see, as soon as you log in or as soon as you do anything and you click on that champs button, you are greeted by 59 completely grayed out champs. Well, I say 59, you get like fucking eight starter champs. Let, let's start with that. Automatically, a new player is instantly overwhelmed, instantly. They look at all of those champs in this game and they think, fuck me, I have to unlock all of these? Are you kidding? How, how much are they? And then they click on a random champ. And this, whatever champ they click on will determine if how long they stay for. And they, this is genuine. If they click on someone like Kinesa, they see 15,000. That's not too bad. I just, surely I can get that in a couple games, you know, maybe maybe five, maybe ten games. But what if, what if they don't? What if they click on someone like Makoa? Makoa looks cool, he's captivating. You look at Makoa, 30,000? Okay, we're, we're getting, a bit, getting a bit ridiculous here, 30,000. That's cool, I guess. But then what if they, God forbid, they click on one of the new champs? Take Jagarath, for example. That is a visually captivating champ for a new player. A giant fucking space worm. That is sick as hell. I want to play as this character. You click on her, you look at her cost. 60 fucking thousand. 60,000 gold for one champ out of the grayed out unlocked 51. What? Are you kidding? What new player is going to look at that and want to grind that much gold for each individual champ? This is this is taking into account that they haven't clicked on anyone else yet. They've clicked on Yag, they want to see the average price of a champ, and they see 60,000. They haven't looked at anyone else yet. Like, their first thought is every champ is 60,000. That's ridiculous. The reason I'm assuming that a new player would think this, by the way, is because any modern sort of hero shooter or different sort of classes or characters you can play as, if it's a free to play game and they've got different characters, they're all going to cost the same, or the way you get them is all the same. Overwatch 2, you just get character through challenges, and the challenges are really easy, they're super quick, you can just do them, get the characters, or you even get them for just playing the game. Something like multiverses, they all cost the same. And you can buy them with both real money and in-game currency and they all cost the exact same. The only thing that you could argue here is that multiverses, the brand new character, whatever in this like instance that I'm showing you, it's the Joker, he costs, you know, twice as much as the other ones. That That's just a fucking cheap tactic that companies do, you know, new character, everyone's gonna buy shit for them. Like, everyone else is the exact same price and the Joker will become the exact same price once more characters get entered. The issue is, Paladins doesn't do this. There are three different prices for all of these champs for no reason. 15,000, 30,000 and 60,000. And I don't know where we draw this line 
because Fernando, Canessa, they're all 15, but McCullough 30? And don't get me started on what, what's the time frame here, because there are champs that have been in the game for four years, yet still cost 60,000 gold, like Vartu. For lack of better words, we're ripping off new players. And maybe you can sit here and say it's a difficulty thing, maybe the more difficult champs are more expensive than the cheaper champs, but if you guys are gonna sit there and try and convince me that Omen and Vora are hard enough to play to deserve 60,000, but Makawa is 30,000, then what the fuck is wrong with you? Because in my opinion, I think Makawa is way harder to play than both Omen and Vora. And I've played all three champs, okay? I know if they're difficult or not. Omen's brain dead, Vora's brain dead. At least Makawa, you have to think. Or maybe a better example would be Maeve and Vartu. I uh, like Maeve is just more unforgiving and more difficult Vartu. All of you fucking EU losers that sit there and want to pretend like you're doing something with playing Vartu can suck my fucking dick, okay? I'd be more impressed if you pulled off what all of you did with Maeve. I'd be more impressed with Maeve than Vartu. Maeve is just factually harder to play than Vartu, and yet Vartu is 60,000 and Maeve is fucking free. In fact, let, let, let's talk about Maven Vartu, okay? Because this is also tied in with the new player experience because the devs seem really focused on balancing champs around casuals and around new players, which sure, okay, cater towards your audience. The ranked scene is fucking dead, mainly because of that giant just block of nothing in the ranked because the servers were being DDoSed. So sure, whatever, cater to your audience, let's talk about balancing for new players. Let's discuss Vartu first, because if I speak about Maeve, my blood pressure is going to go through the fucking roof, and I'm currently two fucking energy drinks in right now, and I cannot be asked to die of a fucking heart attack yet. Vartu got a nerf a while ago, okay? Vartu got a nerf a while ago to his talent, the one where he gets cooldown reduction on his kunai, and this nerf was really fucking dumb as shit because it was his one good, viable, skillful talent, and you guys nerfed it for no reason, and he put an internal cooldown on it of three seconds, and... I don't really understand why. Now, by this time, we had all come to terms with the fact that you were balancing around new players. And if that's the case, this nerf still makes no fucking sense because new players aren't even gonna fucking hit his kunai every three seconds. They're gonna hit one, get that little 10% cooldown reduction, and then fucking miss for the next three seconds. So it doesn't change how new players play VAR2. It has no effect on them. This is only a high level player nerf. That's all this was. So you say that you're gonna balance around casual and new players, and yet half of these nerfs are still around high level play. And so now you're balancing for both of them and it just makes champs feel really weird and just not fit in. Like recently, like next patch you're buffing Vartu. Next patch you are currently buffing the best flank in the game. And I, this must be for new players. This has to be because why are you buffing him to three tenor kunai? That, what? That has to be for new players because they miss all their shots. Like, there is no way you look at your data, you see that Vartu is dog shit in new player lobbies, and so you think, let's buff his damage, even though you nerfed enveloping shadows. But, whatever. You know what? You want to talk about unnecessary nerfs that the devs want to think was a good thing? Let's talk about Maeve. Everyone knows about the fact that you nerfed Cat Burglar and it was the dumbest piece of shit decision any of you ever made in your fucking lives. You nerfed Na Maeve's, like, most balanced talent. Okay, Rogue Scambit as well. Rogue Scambit and Cat Burglar were perfectly fine. If anyone was complaining about Maeve, then it was about street justice. By the way, Maeve hadn't gotten a change in, like, fucking three years. There was no reason to change her, and then you put your grubby fucking little hands on her, and you nerfed Cat Burglar for no reason. And apparently, this is why I'm bringing this up, apparently this was for new players. Because new players complained, and you said that Maeve's play rate had skyrocketed ever, ever since you made her a free champ. I hate to break it to you, but no matter what fucking champ you make free for new players, that champ's win rate is going to skyrocket. They're against new fucking players. And I can guarantee you now, Maeve's play... Fuck, Maeve's play rate and win rate were going up, not because of Cat Burglar, but because of fucking Street Justice. And in fact, I know that for a fact, because as I was on this new account, as I was playing Ceres, I played against a Street Justice Maeve, 
and none of my teammates knew what to do against that. And this isn't anything against them, they're new players. Obviously they're not gonna know what to do against it. They're playing against a fucking execute on a seven second cooldown. What new player is going to know what to do against that? At least with Cat Burglar, the person on the, you know, on the end of playing Mave isn't gonna be able to f hit their fucking knives. Like, sure, 30% damage boost for three seconds or whatever the fuck it is. New players aren't gonna care about that. They can't hit the goddamn daggers. You know what they can hit? The giant ass pouts hitbox. New players just run around throwing out knives willy nilly, hoping they fucking hit. And then all of a sudden they see the big orange skull and they just press right click because the pounce hitbox is fucking huge. So obviously a new player is gonna pop off with street justice. Anyone fucking can. You can't sit there and balance around both new players and high level play. You're just going to get brain dead champs that are meta. You look at new players, what do new players complain about? They complain about Dredge, they complain about Betty, they complain about Moji. What do fucking veteran players complain against? I can tell you now, they don't complain about Dredge, they don't complain about Betty, and well, I guess they complain about Moji now, but that's because you reworked her because you're all fucking incompetent and can't make a new champ anymore. The thing is, you can't sit there and balance around both sides of the coin. You can't sit there and buff Dredge and Betty because the fucking veterans think they're dog shit. The new players are going to be confused. But you can't sit there and nerf Dredge and Betty because then the good players are going to be confused. Like, you can't do both. You're going to have to choose one and announce it. And as far as we're aware, you've chosen to balance around casual. And in my opinion, that sucks. It creates extremely boring metas, but whatever. Your sort of balance philosophy currently is something that I could make an entirely different fucking video on. The fact that Cryptic went into Andrew's chat and started saying that they wanted, quote, a Vartu in each and every role, and then explained what that meant, and it was the most incoherent shit I've ever read. Like, that, that could all be a separate video, okay? I'm sort of getting sidetracked, so let's, you know, focus back on the new player experience. New players like to go to streamers, okay? So let, let's talk about streamers and content creators. New players want to go to them to ask about the game and ask about what they should do. However, as the streamer or the content creator, there's not much you can tell that player. If a player comes up to you and says, hi, fucking Andrew Chicken or XSTB or Infernal Drogos, I've been playing the game for like five hours. I've finally grinded, I've racked up 60K. What champ should I get? What, what can I say? How do I respond to that? Because I can't sit there and say something like, oh, you should get Omen because you know, what if they don't like Omen? They've just wasted 60,000 and five hours of their life. All I can sit there and do is tell them, go to the shooting range. Like, that, that's all I can say. Go to the shooting range, see which one fits your playstyle, and unlock them. But champs in the shooting range feel so much more different than champs outside the shooting range. And I'll explain what I mean. Because if a new player is a support player, Genos, Corvus and Ray all feel completely different in the shooting range than they do in an actual game. For example, with Ray, you're not going to know what you're doing. Like, you, you don't know what buffs you're giving your teammate when you link them or anything like that because no new player, when trying to find out a character, is going to look through a bunch of fucking decks and all 16 cards and try to make the perfect load. No new player is doing that, okay? They're looking at the champ, they're seeing if they like their base kit, and they're purchasing them off of that. And Ray, you can't tell what Ray's doing in the shooting range. You can't tell what Corvus is doing in the shooting range. You can't even test all of his fucking talents because there's only one teammate that you have. All you have is a Fernando who doesn't use any cooldowns, who doesn't ult, who doesn't shield, who doesn't move. He just sits there and gets shot at by Cassie. You can't test cauterize in the shooting range. You can't test if how much support, like healing numbers are going to be with cauterize. You can't do that as a new player. So from where I stand, if I'm a new player and I go to the shooting range and I test Ray, Corvus and Genos, I'm most likely going to go towards Genos because all of his abilities work in the shooting range and I can see what they do. But what if I don't want to pick a support? What if I want to pick a tank? Okay, let's let's look at the tanks then. Let's pick Torvald in the shooting range. Okay, he's got some pretty good damage. I'm shooting it out. I've got this little recharge thing, you know, for my shield. I can test that. I can get shot by the Cassie and look at that. I can shield my Fernando. What, do, what, do, what does this beam do? Let me use that on a bot. That's strange. I can't use it on the Cassie. I'm not too sure why. Let's go use it on one of the standing still bots. I've just connected to them and dealt 
mediocre damage. I'm assuming it's just an auto-aim thing. So you go read the ability, it silences. What the fuck is a silence? You don't know because it doesn't say anywhere what anything is. And that's another thing that new players struggle with. They don't know what anything is. They look at all of this stuff, they look at silence, going ethereal, becoming a damage immune, becoming untargetable, you get stunned, crippled, what the fuck does any of that mean? I, I don't get it. If I'm silenced, can I not speak or something? If I'm crippled, does my champ wheel around in a fucking wheelchair for the rest of the game? Is that the sort of inclusivity we're getting at nowadays? Like, what does any of this mean? What's the difference between being ethereal and untargetable? If I'm ethereal, can I be targeted by my supports? Or like, if I'm fucking damage immune, am I the same as ethereal? What does that mean? If I'm untargetable, can, buy, can I still be affected by CC or do I have to be ethereal at the same time? Dredge's TP is still fucking classified as damage immune, but not ethereal even though it does the same fucking thing! Look, you get my point, okay? There's, there's too much shit in this game and none of it is explained anywhere. Okay, let's calm down. Whew! Let's think of a couple solutions, okay? First solution, the gold situation and the shooting range situation. I'm gonna combine them both. I think the solution to both is just make all champs available in practice, like siege training modes only. That, I think that fixes both issues. You get to test every champ, you get to know who you want to buy before you hop into ranked, before you hop into casuals, and you get to see what the talents do and you get to play with all of the teammates and you get to play against here and enemies or whatever. I think that fixes both issues. You're no longer wasting 60,000 gold on a champ that you've only been able to test in the shooting range just to learn that in a natural game they're completely different and they feel like shit. I think the issue this could cause is new players end up leveling up like champs like Corvus even though they're not in actual games. But like, you can't really remove that. I, you, I mean, I guess you can. You can make it so you don't get champ stats in training mode. And the only people that will complain about that are those fucking weirdos that bot accounts to just spam dredge or lex inside a fucking bot TDMs to get them level 999. But I'm gonna be real, nobody gives a fuck about those people. They're all losers anyway. So you could probably remove that and that'd fix the issue. Another issue that we have a solution for is the balancing one. As I said, you're in that section, just decide on who you want to balance for. And if you want to balance for the casual players, actually fucking balance for them. Don't just sit there and see what you suck at playing against and think to yourself, well, I'm a dog shit player and I'm a new player, so this must be what all new players think. You can't just look at stats and assume that that's the, you know, big issue. Because I guarantee you the devs looked at the fucking Maeve stats, saw that Maeve was skyrocketing in win rate, and just decided it was Cat Burglar because the devs themselves suck dick at playing against Cat Burglar. Like, you can't just think everything as stats. You can't sit there and nerf Maeve because her win rate has went up. It's obviously going to fucking go up if you've made her free. She's going against new champs with a talent that gives her a 7 second cooldown execute. Obviously her win rate will go up. Any champ's win rate will go up if you put them into new player lobbies. Like, fuck, I say we make Ray free, make Ray free, make her the fucking free support. Hopefully when her win rate goes up, you nerf her into the fucking ground. You have to look at things than just stats, okay? And you need to think of wider things when balancing, especially when you make big things such as the fucking armor plating change. Don't get me wrong, we're, we've seen that they're reverting it, but still, you need to take into account all play styles and everything when you go to buff something. You need to take into account everything, don't just look at stats, okay? There, there, there's solution number two to the issue. The whole, let's call it lack of information section that was at the very end, the only solution I can think of for that is giving the players that information. I mean, I guess you sort of have because you've linked Andrew Chicken videos in the past on Twitter, so I guess that counts? But what new player is going to look up the fucking game company's Twitter? to find out what silence does. I'd prefer it all to be in-game in a separate tab, but whatever, I guess. I mean, I say the solution is to give the information to the players, but not even the fucking devs know the information. They didn't even know reload speed was capped at 60%, and that's something that needs to also be focused on. 
but look, that's an entire separate thing, okay? These are my solutions for helping out the new players, and I really hope the devs take these into account. Don't get- I, I don't think they'll watch the video, and if they do, please at least consider these solutions, because your whole player base is being held up right now by new players. It's not by the fucking old ones, they're- they've all left. They're all le leaving. You're fucking bleeding new, like, old players right now. They're dropping like flies. All you've got to sustain this game right now are new players, and the new player experience is currently really fucking bad. So I hope you listen to some of these solutions and take them into account. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I, I just wanted to make this because it was something that's been on my mind recently, and also I haven't made a video in almost a fucking month. The, the next video might either be a fucking rant about the current balance that the devs are doing, or I'm wanting to make a video about Truly Talented because I really think we can learn some shit from that LTN. I mean, I say that they're recently putting Yagarath and Imani into Truly Talented. Let's not do that, okay? Let's just not do that because I'm speaking for a lot of people when I say I'm not playing Truly Talented for the talents, okay? G genuinely, I'm not picking that game mode to play with the wacky talents. I'm playing it so I don't have to get fucking eaten by a worm, rewound by a tank, stunned by the support who gives DR to everyone. I'm playing that mode so I don't have to deal with half of the fucking roster, not because of the talents. I'm getting sidetracked again, my apologies. I'm ending the video now. I hope the new player experience gets better and I hope you take something from this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you when I see you.